Hey, this is John Orberg, and I am in Santa Barbara in my office, writing like crazy and enjoying it a lot. Thank you for everybody who's praying around that. But I thought I would take a break and ask you, how's your spiritual life going? That's a, that's a conversation killer. If you're at a party and you want to stop everybody from talking, you might try that one. But it's a super important question, and it gets to the issue of what does it mean to have a spiritual life? What does it mean to be spiritual? I thought about this because I was with my pal Sam recently, and he gave me an article on why you should have a physicist talk at your funeral. I'll read a little bit of it to you. This is from Aaron Freeman, I think is the guy who wrote it. You want a physicist to speak at your funeral. You want the physicist to talk to your grieving family about the conservation of energy. So they will understand your energy has not died. You want the physicist to remind your sobbing mother about the first law of thermodynamics, that no energy gets created in the universe and none is destroyed. You want your mother to know that all your energy, every vibration, every BTU of heat, every wave of particle that was her beloved child remains with her in this world. You want the physicist to tell your weeping father that amid energies of the cosmos, you gave as good as you got. At one point, you'd hope the physicist would step down from the pulpit and walk to your broken-hearted spouse there in the pew and tell her or him that all the photons that ever bounced off your face, all the particles whose paths were interrupted by your smile, by the touch of your hair, hundreds of trillions of particles have raced off like children, their ways forever changed by you. And as your widow rocks in the arms of a loving family, may the physicist let her know that all the photons that bounced from you were gathered in the particle detectors that are her eyes. Electromagnetically charged neurons all around the world. Your energy cannot be lost. Actually, I don't want a physicist to talk at my funeral. I don't think that my mother is still going to be around to grieve when it happens, but even if she is, that's not the message that I would want her to get. Because what matters is not energy, it's not matter, it is persons, and that gets us deeply into the spiritual the teaching that persons are indivisible units in reality that have great meaning attached to them. And so the idea that you're just, you know, like a glass of water that's going to get poured back into the ocean and become one with anything again does not tend, does not tend to comfort us at a deep level for a, a very good reason. And this gets back to the spirit and the spiritual and how your spiritual life is going and I hope that you are filled with spiritual vitality right now. The scriptures say that God is spirit. What does that mean? God says, not by might nor by power, but, my, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And I hope that you are filled with spiritual energy, with spiritual vitality that you are asking God for right now. But what does that mean? So, by way of contrast with the notion that you ought to have a physicist speak at your funeral who could talk about the conservation of law and energy, because even then we're, we're dealing with issues like uh, the fact that physically entropy will ultimately wind the universe down and governs all matter and energy. There is another teaching and it is about spirit. This is a wonderful little article by Dallas Willard called Spirituality for Smarties. This is based on a talk that Dallas gave at the University of Southern California when a book came out titled Spirituality for Dummies. And Dallas seized on that title and says, somebody ought to write Spirituality for Smarties. And part of what he was referring to is that spirituality, although it is inevitable in human life because we all have this interior dimension to us that only the realm of the spirit can acknowledge or name, Spirituality, largely in our day, in the West, in academic settings, is not thought to contain intellectual content. So, at a school like USC, you will have a department of chemistry, or a department of physics, even a department of philosophy. You will not likely have a department of spirituality. It is thought that it's okay to profess to be spiritual and maybe that you could be a smart person and still say that you are not a spirit, that you are a spiritual person, but it's not thought to involve knowledge that rigorous thinking could be helpful with. 
So let's think about spirit for a moment. What exactly is spirit? In the ancient world, generally, there's a common thread, and you pick it up in languages. In Hebrew, the word for spirit is ruach. In Greek, it is pneuma. In Latin, it's spiritus. And in ancient language, it often means both spirit, like a human spirit, as well as wind, as well as breath. So common to all of these is the thought that spirit involves some kind of power. Uh, wind was very suggestive because it does things. It's got energy attached to it, but you can't see it. It's invisible. And then breath, when someone breathes, they have life. And when they cease breathing, we sense that the spirit has gone out of them. On the day that I'm recording this, you'll probably get this a day or two later, uh, I remember my father's birthday when he took his first breath today and two days earlier it was the day that he died and that last breath went out of him and there is this sense in breathing that a person is animate, uh, animated, uh, alive. We talk about inspiration, uh, respiration to breathe. That's a deep part of the spirit. Now, we can ask a couple of questions about this business of spirit, Dallas says. If it is a form of energy, one question is, uh, is it personal or impersonal? Spirit is power. Spirit gets work done. But it's not like electricity or gravity. Uh, it is different than just physical energy. There is some beyondness to it. And so one basic question is, is it impersonal? In that case, it would be something like the Force, if you've ever seen Star Wars. It is out there. Or uh, is it personal? Is it attached to uh, a God, a divine being? Now, if it's impersonal, there's implications to that that we can think through and test. If it's impersonal, then it's something that I can use. I can approach it with an engineering mentality. And just like I can try to use electricity or try to use magnetic forces for my own good, I can try to use the force. I can try to manipulate it to achieve my ends. And we see various spiritualities that try to do that in our day. If, on the other hand, spiritual reality is a person with a will and a mind, then I will re need to relate to that spiritual reality as I would to a person and approach that person as someone who has plans, who has thoughts, who has a will. And then Dallas says the other uh, crossroads when it comes to spiritual reality is it can be imminent it's something that exists just way down deep inside you, or it can be transcendent. It can have an existence that is independent of you. And if it's imminent, then the way to pursue it is just to see what are the deepest thoughts or longings that are inside of me. In our day, this is often the path of expressive individualism. So somebody like Carl Jung believed deeply in spirituality, but he was very... Uh, put off with his father who had been a minister because he believed the way to pursue the spirituality is just look, what do you feel most deeply? What do you desire most deeply? Follow your bliss. If the spiritual reality is transcendent, uh, uh, then I don't just look for it uh, inside myself. Then this is a reality that might reveal itself or himself. And of course, Jesus' teaching about spirituality is that the spirit realm is real you are a spiritual being. You are not just energy. That's why we don't have physicists talk at funeral. What we look for in spirituality, because we cannot find it anyplace else, is identity. Now, we may look for identity around ethnicity or sexuality or vocation or finances. But we look for all of those things because what we really want when it comes to identity is I want to know that I am a significant human being. That's why we are relentlessly spiritual. And then we look for power. Spirituality is a form of power. And, and I need to be empowered. All of us recognize there are important aspects of life that need to be brought under my control. My appetites, my habits, the circumstances in which I live, relationships with other people. Ultimately, of course, death itself. So, that is some wisdom around the spiritual life. Stuff that I have been thinking about as it relates to spirit. And I hope today that your spiritual life is going really well. Your spiritual life, of course, is way bigger than your devotional life. Religious leaders in Jesus' day 
made the mistake of thinking if their devotional practices were heroic, their spiritual life was great. But of course, Jesus says greatness in the spiritual realm is to be immersed in and captivated by love. And we do that not through our own power. And that is not primarily a matter of physics. It is not something that is true of uh, photons. It is true of human persons and wills. This unseen dimension to ourselves, our minds. You are a spiritual being, as Dallas used to say with an eternal destiny in God's great universe. Not by might, not by power, by my spirit, says God. So I hope that you are spiritually flourishing and you can be doing that. You can do that right now by surrendering and asking God to be with you. And then as you go through the day, may your spirit be strong in God, in his power, in his might. And I will look forward to the next time that I talk to you. Now I'm going to get back to studying and writing. God bless you.